Hello! Nowadays, our modern approach to allergy season is often an antihistamine and calling it a day. But in reality, antihistamines aren't solving the problem, they're just masking it and over time making things worse. In this video, I'm going to talk about the truth behind antihistamines and how you can learn how to manage your triggers and your allergies naturally from a root cause perspective. If you are new here, my name is Dr. Kayla Clark. I'm a naturopathic doctor and intuitive empath, and I am massively passionate about helping modern humans connect the dots between the mind and the body, the science of the soul, and step into true vital health so they can really bring their best to the world. If you are interested in learning how to manage your app allergies naturally from a root cause perspective, I invite you to watch on. First, I want to talk about what histamine actually is. Histamine is the molecule released by a mast cell in the body and is the culprit behind the inflammation, the itchy eyes, the watery nose, um, the swelling, the redness, the big inflammatory stuff that often comes with allergies and eczema and things like that. So histamine is not only involved in the immune system or the allergic response, which is where we often see it cause problems, but it's also involved in the nervous system and in the gut. So while the most common symptom of allergies is all of this stuff I just talked about, the itchy eyes, the watery, uh, itchy, itchy eyes, watery eyes, itchy nose, snot, phlegm, um, inflammation, itchy skin, redness, heat, all of that stuff. But if you are dealing with like a flare of that, you might also notice it affecting your gut where histamine increases stomach acid. So you might notice things like heartburn, nausea, vomiting, uh, indigestion, bloating. And you also might see things in the nervous system. So histamine is also found in the nervous system where it acts as a stimulant helping keep us awake. So uh, if you are dealing with a histamine flare or allergies, you might also notice more anxiety, agitation, um, more uh, insomnia, fatigue, things like that, because your nervous system is just more agitated. So it's important to note that histamine, yes, it is involved in allergies and stuff like that, but it also is found uh, in more systems of the body. Because of this, we often talk about, um, you know, we often talk in our world now about taking an antihistamine and cutting histamines and lowering histamine. But as we start to pay attention, we notice that yes, it's involved in the nervous system. Yes, it's involved in the gut. It does play an important role. So it's not always just about cutting all the histamine and getting rid of it. It's about being strategic and asking the right questions as in, what system is this, over, is this histamine overloaded? Why is it overreacting? Um, what's the problem here? Am I producing too much histamine or am I not breaking it down? Or is it overacting on these receptors? Uh, everybody's different. We're all gonna have different, different issues. And so just like with anything, but especially with allergies in the immune system, figuring out the root cause is gonna be important. So on that note, knowing that histamine is found throughout the body, mostly in the uh, nervous system, in the gut, and in the immune system, but also various parts throughout the body, it's also important to note that there are different sub-receptor types for histamine. So just to be clear here, just to be keep it, keep it fairly simple, there are four different receptors for histamine. Each one, does a slightly different thing and is found in a slightly different area of the body. So we talked about um, the immune system the reaction. H1 receptor types are the one that are often found in the immune system and are most often involved in the allergic systems. H2 receptors are mostly found in the gut and are mostly involved in the acids production. Again, here I'm being very generalized. They're actually all kind of more everywhere, but just to be very general here. Now H3 and H4 receptors are a bit more interesting. They're found more in the nervous system and more in the bone marrow and more on the mast cells and kind of everywhere, but they act more as like a feedback loop um, and are involved sort of in everything. So they act more complexly. When we think about pharmacology now and understanding this, understanding that there are four types of receptors and there are different ways that histamine reacts in the body, the way that antihistamines have been developed is to act mostly on those H1 receptor types, which work mostly in the immune system. So this is effective for allergies because when we take an antihistamine, what we're doing is we're blocking those H1 receptors from working. So we're basically like, if you think of the lock and key scenario, we're blocking the keyhole so the histamine can't activate that receptor and then that receptor can't cause that cascade of inflammation. The problem here though is that a few things, first of all, uh, it's not always effective to simply block the H1 receptor subtype in the body. 
So now that we sort of understand that everybody is going to have different concentrations, everyone's going to have different issues, it might not be as easy as taking an antihistamine and blocking one simple thing and calling it uh, done. Now, however, this might work for most of the population and a lot of people, and that's fine, but it won't work for everyone. So if you're one of those people that antihistamines don't work for you, that could potentially be a reason why, is you might have a different concentration of receptor types and it's blocking the wrong one. Um, and another reason here is why antihistamines don't really solve the issue is because we're, I mean, obviously we're not asking what the issue is, but we're just blocking the receptor. Um, this doesn't, <clears throat> antihistamines don't, don't uh, stop histamine from being produce, produced. They don't help histamine be broke down or excreted. All it's doing is blocking the key so it can be activated of one type. So the problem here is now we have this histamine, that's not, it's still a lot of it. It's not going anywhere. It's just trying to activate the receptor, but the antihistamine has said, no, you can't get to the H1 receptors. So all this histamine is gonna float throughout the body and now there's more of it to go activate those other types of receptors, the H2, H3, H4. So now, although your allergy symptoms might be better, all of those other things that are happening in the body, like the acid secretion, the anxiety, um, the feedback loop, telling the body there's not enough histamine, those might all be activated. So it's actually kind of causing a little bit more havoc than we might think behind the scenes as the body's trying to figure out, uh, like, are we inflamed or are we not inflamed? So again, um, antihistamines aren't, like they might help the symptoms. And again, this isn't me saying don't take antihistamines. I want to make that clear. Always work with your doctor and your, and your practitioner to help you make that decision. They obviously play a role in helping so many people. And I take them myself sometimes, live their lives. Um, but they shouldn't be used as a band-aid. We always want to be understanding our own health and what they're doing in the body so we can like, actually make a permanent change. Okay, so let's have some real talk here. At the end of the day, like I just said, antihistamines are suppressing the problem, but they work, they're easy. So why shouldn't we just take them long-term? Like sure, it might be confusing my immune system, but I only get allergies a few times a year and it's not that big of a deal. I'm gonna call us out here. You know, doing work to have vital health and to be in intuitive and to be in connection and to be sovereign and on top and master ourselves is to be able to show up for ourselves and to put in the hard work. So if we decide to just take an antihistamine and put our hands in our ears and say, la 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 la, I don't want to deal with it. You know, I do understand and I totally want to acknowledge there might be a time and a place for that where our nervous systems aren't ready to handle that, we're not at capacity. And so respecting that, but also being able to call us out when it's time to step up for our health. And then we do have the capacity and the ability to show up and get to these triggers. So figuring out the root cause of anything and dealing with it is not going to be an easy task, whether that be hormone issues or skin issues or gut issues, or in, in this case, what we're talking about is allergies. It is going to be work. You're going to have to show up. We're going to have to learn. It's going to be, um, you know, at times frustrating. It's going to be an investment of time and sometimes money. But at the end of the day, what we want to do is have an intuitive and balanced connection to our body where we can trust ourselves and know how to take care of ourselves the best and how to listen to ourselves and also when to call in help and when we do need to take an antihistamine or go to a doctor or do something else. Okay, so at the end of the day, blindly and unintentionally popping any sort of drug or medication and in this case, an antihistamine, because I honestly feel like in our society, it's so common. It's like one of those things that's just like, oh, you have allergies. That's not your fault. Take an antihistamine. And yeah, sure, it's not. But also, what else could we be doing to help to get to the root cause? So that's what we're going to talk about now. So uncovering the root causes behind your eczema, your allergies, um, it's going to be a unique process for everybody and I would invite you to work with a practitioner or a naturopathic doctor or somebody who can help you put the pieces together. But I'm going to go through some questions that you can ask yourself right now that will help you start to figure out what could be the root cause behind your allergies. So first of all, um, checking into your genetics and your family history. You know, this is a big cause behind atopic conditions and we start to see this throughout the generations and there are various reasons for this, but um, you know, some at the end of the day, 
could be something to do with histamine, it could be an MTHFR defect, it could be a detox defect, it could be a multitude of things that actually stem from a genetic condition. And once you understand and know this, there could be ways that we can deal with it. So this is important stuff to ask. Also, if it runs, again, in your family, um, do other members of your family have asthma, allergies, eczema, um, any other funky stuff that could be contributing all clues. Another question or area you could wonder about is your childhood history. So uh, the hygiene hypothesis is the idea that atopic conditions, allergies, eczema are, are increasing in the Western world in kids because our immune systems are not developing properly because we're not exposed to the microbes and the environmental cues that we once were. Basically because our world is too clean. So we see this often now we like, spray playgrounds and stuff with antibiotics um it was extreme but it happens but where our world is hyper focused on clean kids don't eat dirt anymore they don't go outside as much and so our immune systems aren't developing also the rate of c-section births is really high formula fed babies is really high um so you know being born vaginally gives the baby a chance to uh, be exposed to the mom's microbiome which increases the immune system which will help protect against allergies. Being breastfed, same thing. So you can ask yourself your early childhood history, were you born vaginally, were you breastfed, uh, were you raised in a hyper clean environment, did you roll around in the mud? All of this can help give clues to what potentially could be going on. Another thing you could ask yourself is uh, vaccines. So, you know, to be real, that's what vaccines do is they trigger the immune system to react to things. So if you've had them in the past, which ones did you react? Could be clues. Medications in the past, did you have a lot of infections? Were you on a lot of antibiotics? Again, this could affect the immune system development. So these are things you can ask yourself. Um, other areas that you can query, bugs and parasites. So parasites, particularly if you traveled a lot or if you grew up somewhere that there could be parasites. Um, I mean, honestly, anyone could be susceptible no matter where we live nowadays, but just, you know, if you've been somewhere like Mexico or Thailand or a number of other places where parasites could be a clue, or if you've had really bad stomach flus or stuff like that, they can cause long-term immune system reactions as can viruses. So if you've had Epstein-Barr virus, uh, mono, stuff like that, um, also could be a trigger. So paying attention to lifetimes of that food sensitivities and gut stuff. So do you have any food sensitivities? That's a whole other topic, but getting, um, getting in touch with your gut and what's going on there. And then asking, of course, about your environment and your detox, your detox capabilities. So like what's in season, what pollens are there? What's the index like? Do you live around mold? Are you being triggered? Are there pets around? Um, you know, this is kind of obvious, but <clears throat> still one to consider. So once you understand what your triggers are and what your immune system is reacting to, you can start to do the work to desensitize and to clear that problem. So I would always recommend, again, working with a naturopathic doctor or someone who can work at a high level to help guide you along as you do these things, but you're going to really need to do the groundwork to make sure it happens. So a lot of the time that looks like uh, clearing out the body, making sure the detox pathways are working, making sure you're pooping properly, you're breathing properly, your nervous system is in check. Um, are you taking the right supplements? So some of the things that I like to use to stabilize the immune system are vitamin C, vitamin D, um, medicinal mushrooms, trace minerals, probiotics, um, bioflavonoids, quercetin, nettles, there's so many different options depending on your issue. And so make sure you're really working with someone to create a unique approach for you. I hope you enjoyed this video and you learned a thing or two. I would really appreciate if you would give it a like, a comment, and a follow, and I hope to see you around soon.